Welcome to the Sorcery Podcast, your sacred space to delve into spiritual tools, topics and practices that will illuminate your path of soul remembering and healing. I'm your host, Lija Costa, a soul guide, alchemist, soul writing coach and the creator of the Trust Pathway. I'm deeply grateful to have you here with me. Together, we will embark on a profound exploration of self-discovery and healing, unlocking the secrets that lie within. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Sorcery Podcast. And I feel called to talk about trust. Because trust, it's so important. And to me, trust is one of my core values. But I'm not coming today from a place of talking about trust in ourselves or others, but more like trusting in the process, especially when life is hard, especially when things are challenging and they are not going our way. How the heck? Do we trust? And I feel it's so important to talk about this because it's something that we all struggle at some point in our lives. And I I see so many people in my circle, clients, followers, YouTube subscribers that I see and I know because I have this knowing and this sense that the hardest part is to trust that things will be okay. The hardest part sometimes is not even starting something, is not even going for it and having the courage. And I feel that it's a lot said that, you know, the first step is the hardest. And I used to believe that. But honestly, I don't believe that now. I believe the hardest is when you took the first step and you had that all pumped energy and that motivation to go for it. And you were trusting like, yes, new beginnings and I'll go for it and this will work out. And you had all these dreams and all of these expectations. And then after a while of hard work, of putting your sweat and tears and passion into it, and you don't see the results and you feel like giving up and throwing the towel, that is the heart. The heart is to trust, to trust that you are on the right path to trust that you made the right decision, to trust yourself enough to know you will be okay. To me, that is the hardest part. And a lot of the struggles we have with trusting is because we have this huge need to control the situation as much as we can. We just try. And I'm a control freak. I admit, I like to know what I'm doing. I like to know what's going to happen. I like to to know the steps. I like to tick the boxes. I like to do all of it. And for us control freaks, especially if you're highly sensitive and you need to have that safety around you, it's a struggle to trust because you don't have that safety with trust, doesn't it? Like when things are hard and things are challenging and you miss that safety, that security, that's when you struggle to, to trust the most. And to keep on trusting. But not only is hard because we are trying to control the situation. I think what makes it even worse is because we are cynical about the way we live our lives. And we lead our lives. And what I mean by being cynical is the way we position ourselves. As being tough, as being strong, as being positive, as you know, wearing this mask of having everything together when in reality we are crumbling in doubt and fear inside. And then what happens is we become overcritical, we become patronizing, we become negative, we become perfectionist. So we kind of go into this shadow archetype of the betrayer, right? Where we are very perfectionist and We need to feel safe and in control before going ahead and we need constant proof from others or proof in the process that things are working. 
and we seek advice from the wrong people and we sabotage our own happiness or our own success and we have constant mood swings and we are overly sensitive about everything and we get tangled in this analytical brain, analytical ego and we trust no one, no one because our deepest fear is both of failing and succeeding and we know that all this cynicism is an enemy of trust because what we believe that is being strong is a facade and it only comes from a wounded place within us right it comes from this wounded place within that refuses to trust because trust is too scary Because trusting means being on the edge of a precipice, looking down and not being able to see the end of the precipice. And is looking at the other side, not knowing what's in there or how we are going to build a bridge to get there. But it's in those moments that we must trust the most. Because more often than not, we don't know what the outcome is going to be. In all occasions, we think we have control over things, but we don't. We fool ourselves to think we are in control or that we have things under control, but we don't. Most times, it's outside of our control. We don't know how or what the outcome is going to be. And I know it's hard to trust in the process of life, trust that things are going to work out, especially when external factors keep happening and are being challenging and are creating challenges in our lives and therefore in our ability to trust when things seem to go wrong left right and center no matter what we do or what decisions we make it seems like there's always a roadblock but the truth is these external factors often mirror to us our internal fears and our internal beliefs And that's why we feel so challenged. That's why we feel so activated. Think about the shadow archetype of the betrayer, right? All those shadow aspects of being a perfectionist, of having low self-esteem, not trusting anybody, needing proof, needing validation, seeking advice from the wrong places. Think about these aspects. The biggest fear is both of failing and succeeding. So... That fear is playing up inside of us. So because we have that fear of both failing, but also of succeeding and not being able to hold that success, everything that happens externally is just mirroring those fears to stop us from failing or succeeding, right? And we need to step more into the alchemist, into the golden archetype, which is the opposite of the betrayer. Get into that alchemist energy of living the present moment, of being deeply grateful, of actually following love with the process of life and of the unfolding of the situations and the ability or the opportunity that we get from the, that unfolding to transform things, to create new things and to trust in the process wholeheartedly. Because our deepest desire is actually to alchemize what's broken, alchemize all those broken pieces into treasures, into something meaningful and powerful. So it's moving away from these internal fears and being able to trust. But as human beings having a human experience, it's also important to acknowledge that feeling fear and having this internal fears is normal that is normal to feel a lack of trust and feeling doubt and feel these things activating within us but for our soul being there is no doubt whatsoever about what the universe can provide there are no objections there are no limits right there is just love and trust But obviously for our human being and our egos and our brains, 
that's a different story and so our ego will make us believe that something is not going to work because it will scan from all the experiences in the past that will back up this belief that things will not work to prove it that is not going to work and that's why sabotaging st- starts to happen that's why we start sabotaging our success our happiness start procrastinating making things more challenging than they needed to be because we are basing our assumptions and our expectations of what will happen on our past outcomes and another mistake we make and i think social media is a lot to blame for it it's this belief that things are easier for others than it is for us right that somehow we are missing something and that's why it's challenging for us but for everybody else things are easy and i blame social media for this because of this instant gratification that we see everywhere and we feel that things are just instant and easy to happen but easy is not a touchable reality when we think of trusting something outside of ourselves to provide us with success, with happiness, with abundance, with luck, with love, with whatever, you know, without us doing the hard work, as we see so much portrayed in social media and the media, and that the society and culture and religion in Britain does, it feels too easy. But easy doesn't exist. We have to put the hard work. It doesn't need to be hard work in the sense of working hard, you know, hustling, hustling, hustling. But it can't be just sitting down and not doing anything. We have to take inspired action. And trust requires inspired action. Trust requires us to follow the intuition, to follow the gut feelings and to keep moving. Even if we move slower, we don't stop. We keep moving. We keep trusting that each step we take is taking us in the right direction. It's taking us where we are meant to go. So, how do we trust that we deserve to be successful and to be happy in life when things are challenging, when things are hard? And the secret is... We need to surrender. That is the secret. Because trust is surrender. And surrender is not the same as giving up. And I do have another podcast episode just about surrendering, just about this misconception that surrendering is giving up. It's not. It's not, I'm going to give up. I'm going to throw in the towel. I'm not cut up for this. I can't be bothered. That's not surrendering. Surrender is surrendering in the situation as it is. Is surrendering to your desires to be, do, have and receive more. Because at a soul level, your soul essence, your true self already knows that you are worth it, that you are deserving, that you are enough, that you will get it. But your ego keeps constantly taking you away that power, feeding you with doubts and fears. So when your ego takes your power of knowing away and you start believing that you're not deserving, you then start doubting. You then start double-checking all that you do. You then end up filling your time with things that are distractions in your path, that are not fulfilling, that are not moving you forward. You start asking the wrong places for guidance and the wrong people, focusing on the wrong things that are not moving you forward. This is all signs of procrastination, by the way. And you feel like you're working hard and you're doing, 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 but you're not actually doing what you need to be doing. You're just distracted and putting all your energy in the wrong places. And then what it's going to do is because you're focusing on the wrong things and giving your energy and time to the wrong things, things are not working out, proving to your ego that life is challenged and nothing you do is working and that will block your connection with your intuition and with your inner voice and therefore you're going to start to slowly slowly be stirred away from your path and the more you're away from your path the harder it is to trust right 
You're going to start feeling hopeless. You're going to start feeling overwhelmed. Less in flow. Less connected with your soul. Feeling lost. Feeling stuck. Feeling at a crossroads. Feeling like you just can't keep going. You're going to have to give up because it's, it's too much hard work. It's a waste of time, basically. So it's important to remember that trust is not a thought. You can't think, I'm going to trust now. I'm going to start trusting now. Because trust is not a thought. It is not, it's not how it works. Trust is an emotion. It's an inner knowing. That comes from the space between your thoughts, meaning your mind, your ego, and your emotions, which comes from your heart, from your soul. Trust, it's something you can embody and you start embodying from a place of inner peace, from faith, from stillness that you find when you're not worrying, when you're not overthinking, when you're not doing things to distract yourself, when you're not focusing your energy on the wrong things, when you're not double checking things, right? When you're surrendering, when you are surrendering to the process, to life, to things as is. And that's why it's so important, and I keep, keep repeating myself on this, in order to allow yourself to trust and to connect with your intuition and have that connection with your inner knowing, especially when things are challenging, when things are hard, when things are not moving fast enough or showing results, and you just planted the seeds ages ago and you don't see the fruits, is to cultivate a space of being, of stillness. So you make space to reflect on your thoughts. You make space to actually challenge those limited beliefs, those toxic thoughts that you have. And you create the space to feel and honor your emotions because there is nothing wrong about feeling sad or frustrated that things are not moving, right? Or feel angry that things keep showing your way. But if you don't allow time to feel those emotions, if you keep repressing and suppressing and rejecting and pushing them away, you're not honoring those emotions. So it's really important to create space for that and space to surrender, right? Surrender to the space in you that just knows that all is well, all will be well, no matter what. And I know it's hard, especially if you are a busy mom and you have a nine to five job and then you come home and you have your family and you have to cook and it's really hard to create that space to just be still and feel your emotions and reflect and things like that. I get it. I get it because I'm in the same position. I'm no different from you. But what happens is we tend to, as human beings, we tend to, when we have a lot of things to do and our life is busy, we tend to sacrifice the things that actually are the things we need, if that makes sense. For instance, we know that we need time for our peace and for our joy and for our self-care and for our family and for our spiritual practice. But because we have so much to do, we tend to sacrifice all these things. We don't see them as a priority and they are the exact same things that we should put as a priority because they are the things that will replenish us. And we get stuck in this hamster wheel of doing, 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 doing and kind of give us that excuse to say that nothing comes easy for us, that nothing is working. If I don't do it or go after it or I work hard, nothing gets done. And then because we keep saying these things, right, we start getting resentful. Resentful against our jobs, resentful against our family because we feel we are doing everything alone, no one is helping us. Same at our jobs, we feel like we are doing the jobs of everybody else and no one is doing their part and we feel resentful of that. And yes, we feel unhappy and we feel drained and we feel overwhelmed. And all of these negative emotions, what they are doing is just feeding our ego so that our ego can then feed us back with the proof of a reality we are creating and is a reality of struggle, right? Is a reality of things are hard, things are challenging. Therefore, I can't trust that things will get better because they never will. They, they are not better. 
I'm doing all of these things. Look at me. I'm doing all of these things, wearing all of these hats, both in my personal life, both in my professional life, doing all these things and things are not getting better because I'm not deserving of having a happy and easy life. And we are just creating this reality. And when this happens, we come from an energy of reacting, of not holding our power, of not being this alchemist, golden aspect of our personalities, of this archetype. Instead of responding, which is holding our power, instead of, you know, being grounded and being the present moment like the alchemist and just responding to things and trusting. No, we come from the betrayer, we betray our needs, we betray our families, we betray our careers, our emotions, we betray our intuition even, right? And we betray our power by reacting to things. And that's why it's so important to create space in our days just to be, just to dedicate to our spiritual practice if you have one, or at least just to be silent, because that will create stillness and space for being and space for expansion. And this can look like taking a nap in the middle of the day, put a timer for 30 minutes, or 15 minutes of journaling at the end of the day, or walk in nature after a long day at work, and I know it's hard to come home and you have all of these things to do, but 15, 20 minutes walk, will make that shift or 10 minutes of meditation before you fall asleep I love to do that I sleep so much better when I do it or dancing or chanting or praying or reading a book all of these little things small things that don't take away too much time you don't need to create this whole ritual environment around it there are simple things that you can start implementing every day or at least aim for every week to spend a couple of hours creating that space for you, just so you step away from this energy of doing, doing, doing and hustling and worrying and overthinking and trying to control things and just being grounded and still so that you then create that connection with your intuition and therefore surrender and trust. So how are you going to commit yourself to creating space for being? How are you going to commit yourself to being consistent? Especially when the external world and the external aspects or things outside of you are challenging you. And if you're struggling to trust right now, please know this is not the end of it and that you're not alone. Please don't be hard on yourself. Even last week, I was in this position myself. I was applying for a a job position and the weight and not being able to control things. And then I wasn't even called for the interview and having all of these emotions of being rejected, which was not the case, but obviously triggers our most core wounding. And then I couldn't trust myself to think things will work out for me. I'm not deserving of having a career. I'm not deserving of earning an income that is consistent because I love the work that I do here. You know, as a self-healing teacher, I love the work that I do. But I will be lying if the work is consistent. It's not. And I need to pay my bills, right? I live in a 3D world where money and paying bills is important. When all these external factors start to make pressure and things are hard and challenging, It's really hard to trust and I was in that position. What did I do? I'll tell you this. For the whole week, I was listening to meditation before I went to bed. 10 minutes meditation every single night. I was listening to it. I was doing my gratitude as I always do. During the day before I came to work, I lit an incense. I connected with my crystals. I did some deep breathing. I did some self-regulation exercises to regulate my nervous system. I went for another job interview and I got the job because I surrender. I just surrender. It is what it is. I'm doing my best. I'll be my authentic self. I'll not push. I'll not hassle. I will not overthink. I will not worry about it. I'll just trust that if this is the job for me, I'll get it, you know, and it helped me to create that space 
to feel my emotions I had to process all these emotions of feeling rejected feeling that I didn't have what it takes I didn't have knowledge enough experience enough you know enough degrees whatever thing you know for that one job that I applied first and then feeling rejected and comparison items and all of the things I had to allow myself to feel those things to feel those emotions cry process integrate and then okay let's move on and then focus my energy on another thing and that's why I'm telling you it's not the end and you're not alone and please don't be hard on yourself start by reflecting on the core reasons why for you trust is so hard because you're gonna have your personal reasons your personal beliefs your personal wounding as to why you struggle so much to trust and then remember that you get to change the narrative you get to grab your power back and that's why I did after all the you know being that child and victim archetypes of oh poor me you know everything's against me I'll never get this blah 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 when I kind of processed that I came back into my power and I said let's alchemize this frustration this anger this and fairness I'm feeling at the moment and let me alchemize this into something that will focus my attention and my energy onto something that possibly is more aligned to my life right so please 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 don't be hard on on yourself things will get better they always will sometimes it's a phase but it's just a phase when one door closes another window opens and I don't even say a door sometimes it's just a window we just have to take that inspired action and trust okay if this is showing up to me now let me trust this is the thing that I need to go for and just surrendering any expectations any timelines right because sometimes we have this this expectation that things have to work out in a certain way by certain time to work and it is not like that the universe doesn't work like that we just have to keep ourselves open and my trust channeling deck is such an amazing tool that you can use to bring yourself into creating this space for stillness for being for surrendering you can use it as an oracle deck you can use it as to connect with your intuition to bring you the soul inquiry that you need in that moment in time to reflect on so that you work on your healing work on whatever is blocking you from moving forward and giving you that hope that faith that you need to move on with trust before i love you and leave you i'll pull a card from my trust channeling deck (laughs) oh my god yeah and the card i pulled is from the thrive suite And the soul inquiry is, what is my divine purpose and reason for being? What is my divine purpose and reason for being? And the affirmation is, my path is unfolding before me. Oh my gosh, how on point is this? (laughs) Trusting in the path, trusting in the process, that things are unfolding the way they should without expectation just surrendering to it you see how this trust deck is just an amazing tool that you can use in your healing journeys it's just amazing so if you don't have the deck you can reflect on this whole inquiry perhaps you can spare some 50 minutes today to journal about this whole inquiry about this affirmation see what comes through to you if you'd like to get your hands in one of these decks you have two options You have the option of having this as a digital deck in a digital app where you can create spreads, shuffle, you know, you can pick one card, three cards, journal on the app, have everything in your pocket, in your phone or tablet. And you can do that by going to the link that I will leave in my show notes for the deckable app. I will leave all the instructions. So basically you just need to download the app either in your Google Store or App Store. You download the Deckable app, you look for the Trust Journaling Deck and you purchase the Journaling Deck. If you create an account before you purchase, it will give you credits, which means that you can try the Trust Journaling Deck 
for free for a few days before you commit to the full price, right? So you have that option. Or if you, like me, prefer to have the physical deck, you know, prefer to touch and just, you know, pull the card intuitively and feeling that tingle in your hand to pull a card, you can head to my website, www.lijacosta.co.uk, head to the shop and get your hands in the limited stock I have of the journaling deck. If you do it before the stock runs out, I'm also offering a free workshop Well, it's not free, it's normally £30, but I'm giving it away included as a free bonus for whoever buys the physical deck, the workshop journaling to find yourself. So we'll help you with how to implement journaling into a spiritual practice, into a self-development practice that you can use on a daily basis to help you with your healing. Again, I'll leave all the links in the show notes all the instructions in the show notes for you to follow. And yeah, I hope this episode was helpful. I hope this episode was something that you needed to hear today, that it's possible to trust when life is hard. It's normal to get all these doubts. It's normal to fall into the betrayer archetype, but you can alchemize that. You can step into the alchemist and gain your power back and surrender in the process and trust that everything is going to be okay. Thank you so much for listening to this episode and I will see you on the next one. Thank you for listening to the Sorcery Podcast and for holding space for this conversation. It is truly magical to be able to walk with you on this journey of soul healing and inner transformation. If you resonated with this episode and found it valuable, I would be grateful if you could leave a review on iTunes. Your feedback helps me reach more souls searching for guidance and healing. For more guidance and soul wisdom to support Soul Awakening Wingman through the journey of alchemy, please visit my website www.lijakosta.co.uk Love and healing to all. See you on the next one.